time when you need to join two narrower boards into one wider board. So for example, these two here. Whether you're building a shelf, tabletop, any time where you need a board wider than what you have, you need to create an edge joint like this, which is quite simple when you look at it, but to execute it's actually quite difficult. It's a little bit more work than you might think. I can definitely spend the time to make this one absolutely match the straight edge and that in theory if I make both pieces both pieces that go together match that straight edge it give me the perfect joint. But do we really need all that? Thinking about this problem I realized a couple things. Number one, the wood glues that we use today are amazing. They're very strong. A wood bond from long grain to long grain is actually stronger than wood itself. So I'm not worried about having the joint, for example, come apart. The other thing, we've got all kinds of amazing clamps which exert a ton of pressure, literally, and you know what? Wood slightly elastic. We can make it conform to whatever we need. So to finish my example here, I'm going to put a concave into this board as well. And I'll show you how we can pull it together. Okay, so now I've got a second concave board. And, you know, those two there combined, I've got quite a large gap. Now, I know that some woodworkers would object to having a gap like that. Me? Why not see if we can make this work? So, let's get some clamps. I was able to close that gap, which was a sixteenth of an inch. If I apply my glue, let the glue fully dry, I've got no issues with this board at all. So the question then remains, if I can have two concave boards with a sixteenth or even larger gap and I'm able to pull that together with clamps, how straight do our edges really need to be? Obviously they do not need to be as straight as a precision ground straight edge. This one is probably straight within one thousandth of an inch over every foot or so. We don't need that kind of tolerance. What do we need? If you think about it, what we really need is a fair surface. We want an even curve going across. If we had even a straight, perfectly straight line that just dropped off suddenly, we'd have a hard time conforming the wood. To clearly illustrate my point, I've made this board quite severely concave. I put a straight edge on it, I see 3 sixteenths of a gap. That's a big gap. So what I have here is obviously not a straight edge, but I don't care about that. I want to know whether or not I can draw them together and create a seamless surface without gaps in between. So the way I do that is using this tool here. Put away the precision straight edge. This here is my rubber straight edge. It sits on the material and, I, and with light pressure I'm able to see that Yes, it will conform all the way along the length of the material. You can see clear as day that there's a good bit of light coming through under the straight edge, but as soon as I press down on it, that light disappears. And I can look side to side, see that I've got no gap between the rubber straight edge and the material. That tells me that my edge is fair. To uh, demonstrate what an unfair curve would look like under the straight edge, I'll just take a spoke shape here and I'll just scoop away. That part there, okay. So just as before, when I set the rubber straight edge on my material, I see light underneath. I press down and now the light disappears under most of it except, look at that there. So here is where I took the spoke shave. It's got a little bit of a concave there. That tells me when I put clamps on the material, I am likely to have a gap here. So I need to work a little bit more on this area. Let's uh, put this board in the clamps and see what happens. Now, 
obviously there's a limit to how big of a gap that you can close. That limit is based on how many claps you have. So if you have enough claps, even a large gap can be closed. Let's have a look. So I think it's quite evident how successful this joint is. Lots of clamps along the way, nice tight joint until this section here. Now this of course is where I took the spoke shave to create that, that uh, concave section, the unfair part of the curve. And it's tight the rest of the way. So you see, even when you have a non-straight edge, or two non-straight edges for that matter that are significantly not straight. You can close them with clamps and just use good glue to hold it together. All you need to do is make sure that uh, your edges are fair, that it's an even curve. And the way that we do that of course is with the rubber straight edge. Now I know that this joint isn't cosmetically perfect, but come on, you gotta ask yourself how much time do you want to spend trying to make something perfect? My little secret, I use this stuff all the time. I use this stuff on everything, anywhere I have a gap, uh, up to a half inch, of course. Remember that your rubber straight edge is useful for a lot more than checking your joint edges for straightness. For example, you can use it to check the flatness of your plane sole without risking damaging the iron. Check the straightness of your handsaw. Checking the straightness of walls and IKEA cabinets. It's ideal for drawing straight, curved, and mostly straight lines. Or you can use a pair of them to hold work pieces steady while sanding or carving. Even works well to clear the bench. Best of all, because of its unique construction and non stated accuracy, you can use it on a daily basis with no fear of knocking it out of accuracy. The rubber straight edge is made in Canada and guaranteed to conform to your loosest definition of straight. Don't forget the half inch putty.